Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and welcome back to another episode of Mario's Minute. For those who do not know, this is the second podcast I do here. The main one I do, Mod Chat, is a podcast in which I come on and I talk about new things in the world of video game modding, video game console modding, just development, news, things that I find interesting, and a little bit of show and tell, with a visual component as well. This is not that, however. This here is Mario's Minute, where I come on here once a month. I've been doing it for several years. Sometimes I have a guest, sometimes I don't. And I really just come on here and talk to you all about whatever the hell I want to. There's not all too much that's going on here. Uh, typically, if you're checking out the video visual version, uh, there's just a visualizer on here with my channel background. Or if you're wanting to take it around and listen to it like an actual podcast, you can in audio-only form. Simply look up Mario's Minute on your favorite podcasting app, host, provider, or platform, and you should hopefully be able to find it. It's not available on all of them, but it is available on most of them. Either way, like I said, this is a show where I come on here, I talk to you all about whatever the hell I want to, or whatever the hell we want to, and I try to alternate the guests uh, every other month. Now, unfortunately, I do have to apologize here right off the bat. Uh, on me, I did not get a guest for this month. Uh, this would have been a guest month, however, I'm not even getting around to recording this until the day before it rolls out. Uh, so at least this episode will be a little fresher, but at the same time, uh, I've just been busy enough that that's kind of how it happened here. So unfortunately, I was not able to secure a guest, but I will do my best next month on here. However, there's a few things I did want to talk about with you all in regards to uh, just random topics and things. And sometimes I do have some news. Sometimes I have things that are a little bit structured, but sometimes it's just going to be some news kind of like this. Uh, and not even news here. It's just going to be random things. Uh, the first one here being, it's going to be a pretty gaming related episode, but the first one related to Street Pass because I'd seen a tweet go up recently where... It was saying that just over 13 years ago was in was when Street Pass ended up uh, being released in Europe. And if you do not know, uh, if you did not use Street Pass on 3DS, especially back in the day, it was it was a magical thing. And this is something I truly miss that the Switch does not have. Uh, so the 3DS it had a sleep mode functionality on there. And it was really cool because it was the, the last Nintendo handheld that was really just packed with features. Uh, you had full backwards compatibility with DS games. Well, not full. I know there was some games you just physically could not play, like the Guitar Hero games you could not play on there. But even then, uh, it did have, uh, because of that, it did have a Game Boy Advance emulator that you could access, uh, which you could even just, you know, take much more advantage of if you modified your system. Then thanks to the Virtual Console, you had many other game libraries that were accessible as well, too. Uh, of course, you know, you modify your system, you're able to access Homebrew, use Homebrew emulators, get even more access at that point. Uh, and then, of course, you had, you know, your 3DS games on there. But one thing I genuinely miss, oh, themes, themes, that's another thing. The, can we just talk about that? The 3DS has themes, the Switch, I think it's going to be going out without themes. That's shocking. It took how many years to establish folders on there, and no one talks about it, because no, it, it's kind of cumbersome to set them up. And I think they just released it too late into the life cycle. I have a ton of Switch games on my Switch. At this point, it's too late for me. I, I'm not going to categorize them all into folders. <laughs> Back to this, however, the thing with the 3DS and Street Pass that made it so magical was on the Switch, of course, you do have a sleep mode where you can just, you know, wait a certain amount of time or you can just tap the power button and it goes to sleep mode. Uh, but it's just a low power mode and it has background downloading and that's really about it. On 3DS, you had that and the sleep mode did not last as long. However, I think that's also for good measure because, well, you could use it as a way to track your steps. And before I end up using a wearable and before smartwatches were a thing, uh, this is actually what I did. And it was awesome because at the time of like the prime of the 3DS, uh, that's when I was in college at the time. So it's funny. It's I even like half joke about it, but it's not even really a joke. I think most of my time was on Street Pass games on the 3DS with actually playing something because I messed around with several games. But when it came to actually playing stuff, the Street Pass games were really fun. Uh, so that all brings us up because essentially, 
literally like the way I would use my system is that, you know, I would make sure it's charged. I put it in sleep mode. You just close the clamshell. Then you put it in your pocket or your backpack. And it was nice because you could also get uh, coins and you, you were capped on it. But every single day, there was a certain amount of coins that you could max out at. And the max amount of coins that you could have in your bank at a time was 300 coins, which you could use those coins to unlock more things in regards to Street Pass. Now, the Street Pass functionality was that's when Mii's were still a thing on there. And essentially, you would have your Mii all customized, all set up. And then you could go around and quite literally anybody you were passing who also had their 3DS in uh, sleep mode, if you passed them, that's where the street pass part of it was. And you all would exchange Mies essentially where you could go to your street pass center. You could end up meeting those Mies. Uh, then if you end up meeting with them multiple times, you can start exchanging messages with them. But then for all these Mies that you were getting, you were then able to play all these mini games. And probably my favorite mini game on there was the RPG game. And it ended up being worthwhile because essentially the more me's you are finding, not only if you run into the same ones, they start to level up, but you start to level up as well too. And then you're just going through this like little silly fun RPG. Uh, it was really fun and it was really cool. Even like if you go back into your history, you could go in and you could see uh, which me is that you have passed. So there would be people who would show me this, like they went to a convention and they would be street passing people constantly and they would come home and they'd be like, look at all these people I end up street passing. And I know the last few years, especially with the 3DS becoming more end of life and the store shutting down and a resurgence for demand of it and people modding them, there's also been a push among the community to go out and street pass and have some more street pass events, which I absolutely love to see. Uh, however, I, probably my favorite moment I wanted to share because I hadn't shared it on the channel. I've shared it to some friends. Um, I actually shared it on Twitter. However, uh, like I said, there were times where, you know, you have your classes, you're going, you know, across the same routes in college and everything uh, on campus. And it was getting to the point when it wasn't like a constant thing, but there were a few specific characters that I was running into consistently. And it was like every Tuesday, every Thursday, or like every single Wednesday, I would run into this person. And again, when you start running into the same people consistently, you could send messages to them, they could send messages to you. It was really cool doing that. So probably my favorite Street Pass moment was my name on there was Mario. I had my own me that kind of sort of looked like me. And there was another person, I cannot remember their name. But this person and I, we end up street passing a few times. And there was one time they ended up sending me a message that just said something like, so we meet again. <laughs> just a little ominous like that. Uh, now, one of my friends that I had several classes with, he was having a game night one evening. And uh, I went over there and brought a few systems with me. I brought my 3DS and I also ended up bringing over my Wii U. And so we hooked it up, we were playing some stuff, and then people were busy with the Wii U. And I ended up pulling out the uh, 3DS and I was playing some games with some other people. And then it was funny because there was one person who was kind of like really looking over. And he came over and somehow we ended up figuring out who each other were. And the best part was th this person, again, I had never talked to him. And funny enough, I don't think I'd even seen him before this night. Because, you know, we passed each other, but I just probably just wasn't looking. I was probably just looking down or I was looking at my phone or I was just my head was in the clouds. I don't know. Uh, but either way... When he ended up figuring out who I was, he just exclaimed, wait, you're Mario? And that was just one of the coolest moments where it's like you're consistently passing this person and you keep street passing them and then you're able to finally link a username and a me to a face. Uh, it only happened to me one time, but that was probably my favorite street pass moment. Then on the days where we would pass each other, we actually end up acknowledging each other. Like we nodded each other. We're just like, hey, yeah, we're, we're street passing. We got it. <laughs> But that was probably one of my favorite moments, if not my favorite moment of Street Pass. And uh, that's all to say, you know, it, it sounds a little bit silly right now. But when when 3DSs were more prevalent, when it was, you know, more normalized that they were you go going out the house and all that, um, you ran into organic things like that. You end up getting Street Passes. And that kind of just makes me want to grab one of my 3DSs and just start bringing around with me and see if I can get that little LED to turn green while it's in sleep mode. I, I think that'd be a little cool. It's something I definitely miss. I, I think it's something that uh, it would have been really cool to have it on the Switch. 
in many ways, I understand the Switch is a console. It's not a handheld. It is a portable console. It's not a handheld. Uh, but in many ways, just because of things like that, uh, that's also why the Switch felt like a downgrade. Because you really had a really nice menu system, ecosystem, and everything on the 3DS. And then you end up stepping down to the Switch, and it's like, well, you, you don't have any of this functionality now. And now, I mean, if you if you bring around a 3DS and you pull it out in public, I, I don't think anyone's going to look at you funny. If anything, they're going to, like, ask some questions and be interested and be like, oh, that's really cool. But, you know, just because it's not a current generation system, you're not going to have people just carrying them around. So the chances of, you know, street passing people are dramatically lower now in 2024 than they were, you know, back in 2014, let's say. So rest in peace to street pass i suppose for newer systems uh but i definitely hope with newer nintendo systems uh there is some kind of functionality like that that is uh brought back it'd be really nice having some more uh, little like irl social stuff like that <laughs> so the next thing here uh it, it's not going to be a game related thing but it's uh actually going to be dog related so uh, as you all know, I have my dog Lily. She is actually over in the corner of the office sleeping right now. And uh, my girlfriend also has a dog. And thankfully, her dog and my dog end up getting along incredibly well. Uh, they are the best of friends, thankfully. And Lily hates most dogs, but she does like this dog quite a bit. And this dog seems to love on her, so it works out pretty well. However, something ended up happening where it was uh, a few weeks ago... Uh, th there was a little bit of a heist that ended up happening between these two. So I was out and about. Um, I had a few errands to do. So I was going out. I was doing things. Uh, my girlfriend was here. She was holding the fort down and she was taking care of both of the dogs. And at one point she ended up sending me a video. And since I was out and busy, I just didn't get to see it. But when I came home, she asked me if I saw the video. And I said no, because I was, you know, I was out and about. I was trying to go from place to place, get back home. So... She ended up making me watch this video, and it was a video that she recorded where she was essentially scolding Lily because my girlfriend had a bowl of rice and salmon that she was, you know, getting ready to eat, and she took a few bites out of. And then she ended up putting it down, and this is how the story went. She, she put it down. She went to use the restroom. When she came back, she was, you know, watching a show or something. She picks up her bowl. She's about to eat from it and notices the bowl is empty, and it was really... It threw her off because she said that the bowl was not disturbed. The, the contents on the table were not disturbed. The, the spoon was in the same position that it was before. But she ended up putting two and two together and saw that Lily, who was like nearby, who was like right there, Lily was the one who ended up eating the food. And of course, I end up believing it because unfortunately, Lily has done that before. There's been several times, like ever since when I first got her, even, you know, at other times there might be, you know, some food, you know, sitting on a table and if she's near it or if there's no one around, if she thinks it's safe, she might grab it. So that's why what I do, you know, there's been a few times, yeah, you reprimand, but at the same time, you also can't really set up your dog for failure. So uh, I just try to make sure food is away. I don't try to have food all around. I just, you know, try to make sure that it's clean. Uh, so that way, if the food is not accessible there, then she's not going to eat it and we don't run into situations like this. But my girlfriend was kind of scolding a lily and was a little bit upset that, you know, all of her salmon was eaten. And uh, she's like, oh, you know, when, when your dad comes home, he's going to he's going to hear about this. And of course, I'm just like, okay, yep, of course Lily did that. All right, well, I'm sorry about that. We'll have to, you know, we'll have to remedy this. It's okay. So we also have a security camera. And I was like, you know, let me just, let me just see what the security camera picked up. And what happened was I ended up pulling up the security camera footage. I looked to see around the time it happened. And I could see, because there was a timeline where, you know, you see the video previews. And there's some where my girlfriend is there. And there's some where she's not. And there's some where she's back. And I looked for the ones where she was not. I pull up the video footage. And it wasn't Lily. It was her dog who, while she was gone, ended up jumping up on the couch. And ended up eating the, the, the salmon that was in this bowl. So I pull this up. I bust out laughing. She's asking me what's going on. I end up showing her. And then she's just upset at her dog. Because at this point, it's like her dog did not end up giving any hint, any inkling 
that they were the ones who end up stealing the salmon. Uh, she ended up blaming Lily, uh, you know, misblaming Lily right here. And she even told me, she said, you know, the reason why I thought it was Lily is because when I came down, Lily was right there. She was at the scene of the crime. She was there when it happened. My dog was nowhere to be found. So I said, okay, you know, Lily was in the wrong place, wrong time. So that was that was part two of the story. You know, part one, Lily ended up taking the blame for this. Part two, Lily is cleared of her charges, and uh, her, my girlfriend's dog is the one who we have video evidence of this dog eating food. So what happened was, you know, shortly after, I said, hey, I'm going to take the dogs on a walk. So uh, I took both of them out. I'm walking them. Now... They had also gotten some some salmon before, and because Lily's a little older now, uh, she is, is she, hold on, how old is she now? She's nine. Wow, that's crazy to think about, but she is nine years old. So because of that, we ended up having like a lot of salmon we worked on and stuff, and we had given some of it to them the day before. Uh, and because of that, they were, Lily at least was a little bit sick from it. Uh, you know, she was letting it pass. It was okay. It wasn't anything bad, but I could tell. I was like, okay, you know, I gave you a little too much salmon. That's what happened. Just, you know, all the oil. Uh, that's what was going on there. I'm just trying not to be too graphic to anybody who might be eating or something, but there will be a little bit of warning right here. So I start walking the dogs. Maybe like 20 minutes in. At one point, I could tell Lily her, her stomach was a little bit upset. So she ends up finding some grass. She throws up. What do I find in the throw up? Orange fish, salmon. <laughs> so when I see this, I just start laughing. And then as I'm walking back, you know, I come back inside. I let the dogs loose. I take off their leashes. And I told my girlfriend, I said, hey, so uh, you know how you blamed Lily at first? And then it was really your dog who ate the salmon because we have video evidence of it. She said, yeah. I said, well, uh, I, I just ended up walking Lily. And I think she ate enough that, you know, she she was a little sick. She she threw up here. Uh, but guess what? There was some salmon in there. <laughs> and my girlfriend kind of just like pulls her hair and she just yells girls at them. <laughs> and then she's like thinking back on everything that happened. First of all, we're like, OK, so both of us were right and both of us were wrong. Uh, it ended up being the both of them, it seemed to be. And then she was thinking back and she's like, you know, it actually makes sense now because I came I came back and I noticed that after I had finished using the restroom, I came back and they were both really happy. Like both of them were really happy. And I was trying to figure out why they looked so happy, why both dogs were so happy with me coming back. And now I understand it's because both of them had stolen salmon. <laughs> So she's a bit of a foodie as well, too. She is a magician in the kitchen, and she was also, with that, a little bit upset just because uh, a, a good chunk of salmon, a very good, a little bit pricey chunk of salmon, had ended up getting eaten uh, by not one, but both of these dogs. So that was the uh, salmon escapade that ended up happening with them, too. <laughs> now, uh, you know, the only other thing I really have... Uh, planned on here that you know kind of a story i was thinking about was actually related to a game that i want to talk a little bit about which was uh related to final fantasy 7 uh now final fantasy 7 you know absolutely beloved entry in the series uh whether it's uh well deserved or not uh it's up to you to believe that i personally think it's um yeah i would say it's my favorite final fantasy no doubt uh and i absolutely love it um, is it the best one? Even though it's my favorite, I can say no. It's kind of one of those types of consensus where uh, Final Fantasy VI is generally hailed as probably the best one, but Final Fantasy VII ends up getting all the attention because it had such a big splash just because it was a huge technical marvel at the time. I mean, it was the first one on CD-ROMs, and it was three of them, and it had full motion video, and it was on the PlayStation, so it made a huge splash. But, you know, I love the other ones as well, too. My first one I really got into is Final Fantasy X. I absolutely love IX. Um, you know, there's the MMOs. There's, of course, you know, the, the, the meme around Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, so... That's all to say here, I love my Final Fantasy VII, right? Now, one thing I love about it is that I love that we were able to get 
a remake of it. And we we have it's at the point now it's playable on pretty much anything. You can play it on PC, you can play it on phone, you can play it on Switch, you can play it on PS3, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series. Uh, not on Xbox 360 unless you play it through like the PlayStation emulator on there. I I suppose, and I'm not sure how well it would work on that. Uh, however, you, you have all this accessibility to it now, uh, and most of it is, of course, from the original one being uh, remastered in a way and really just ported over to other platforms. I know the original PC release was a mess, but it's been, I think, re-released a couple of times on PC. The modding scene is really great on there. I personally, the last time I played through the original one, it was actually on Switch, uh, and it was a pleasure to play through it on there. I absolutely loved that. So that's been great. Uh, but if you're wanting a new experience with that, you have Final Fantasy VII Remake on PS4, PS5, uh, PC now, I suppose, as well, too. Uh, but then, of course, we've been waiting for the sequel to that, which is Rebirth, which ended up coming out at the end of February. Uh, they, they took use of Leap Year, thankfully, so it came out on February 29th of this year, which was definitely cool. I ended up picking it up, and I will say, uh, I'm not as far in as I would have liked to be. Uh, I've been a little busy this month, but when I've been trying to play games, I've been trying to play it. I'm only about 21, 22 hours into it, though. But a part of it was, I did end up going back and I replayed... Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, um, Integrate, and I talked about that a little bit in last month's episode, because with that one, I went in there, I ended up, uh, you know, playing it from start to finish, uh, my girlfriend had actually never seen, she knew about Final Fantasy VII, she'd seen a little bit of it before, but she'd never seen Remake, uh, the full playthrough, so she played through it with me, um, uh, really, I was playing it, she was watching it, and then we played through, uh, Integrate together, and uh, then, you know, was waiting for Rebirth. Now, in the interim, kind of during that time in between, I actually played a little bit of Crisis Core. And in a good and bad way, it is a remaster of the, it is a loyal remaster of the PSP game. The good news is it's a loyal remaster of the PSP game. The bad news is that it's a loyal remaster of the PSP game. Uh, when you're playing it, and I was playing on PS5, it really does feel like you're playing a PSP game, um, as good and bad as that is. It's kind of one of those things that works as much against it as it does for it. So I actually had a little bit of buyer's remorse because, well, even though I got it as a present years ago, I said, you know, at the time I wanted it on PS5 because, you know, I want to play these games on console, but, you know, at the nice high fidelity and everything and have them on one system. But then when I was playing on my PS5, I was like, wow. You know, if I if I knew it was just going to be the PSP game itself, I really would have picked it up on Switch. <laughs> um, however, Rebirth ended up coming out, and uh, we've been playing through that. And I will say, it's been it's been an interesting experience so far. Um, and I will get to that when you know I'm talking about games I'm currently playing. However, I wanted to bring this up because Final Fantasy VII has had so many accolades around it, and it, it had me kind of remember one person. And you gotta realize, like, ever since the PS2 came out, people have been asking for a Final Fantasy VII remake. I remember well over 20 years ago, there was rumors, I have no idea where they started from, but there was rumors that there was going to be a remaster of sorts, it wasn't even called a remaster at that time, but it was essentially going to be a remaster of Final Fantasy VII for PS2, where essentially it was going to be on one DVD as opposed to three CDs. Uh, it was going to be ported over to the PlayStation 2, so it wouldn't just be a PS1 game running backwards compatibility, and uh, it would have enhanced graphics on there. Uh, that was the original rumor, and it seems like ever since we succeeded from the PS1, People have specifically been wanting a remaster or a remake or more of Final Fantasy VII. Uh, that's why it's just been such a beloved game for so long. Uh, Seven in particular. Uh, to the point where, you know, we end up having, uh, when the PS3 was announced, there was the Final Fantasy VII uh, intro tech demo, uh, which that was just the biggest tease. We all thought that a remake was going to be happening. No, it was just a tech demo where they redid the uh, initial intro for Final Fantasy VII on the PS3 hardware. Uh, there was Final Fantasy VII Advent Children, that film. I know we're doing this a little bit out of order, which, uh, you know, I will say as a kid, I thought it was the coolest thing. And then, you know, w when you get older and you look at it again, it's like, wow. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful movie. 
it looks really good, don't get me wrong, but there's there's not a lot of substance there. <laughs> I, I I guess we just don't have we don't have very good luck with the Final Fantasy the Final Fantasy movies. I think the spirits within that one nearly bankrupted uh Square. Uh, Advent Children, I mean, it looks beautiful, but as a movie itself, it, it doesn't really have that much substance. Uh, and what was that one? There was the one that came out before Final Fantasy 15. I'll be honest, I fell asleep during that one. I watched it as a primer for Final Fantasy 15. Uh, the only thing I can remember was Aaron Paul was in it. That, that's all I can remember. I fell asleep. That's one of the few movies I fell asleep to. <laughs> so... What I'm saying is, uh, going back to it, though, we've also had, you know, the spinoff games where, uh, not only that, there was Advent Children, but we also got Dirge of Cerberus. We got uh, Crisis Core. So we just kept getting teased for years. Uh, we got, you know, Final Fantasy VII. At first, we thought it was going to be a remake. Then it ended up being just the re-release remaster on new systems. Then we finally end up getting the remake. But... Among all of this, I think back to one person when I was younger, I was talking to them at a video game store. And I remember I was bringing up the idea of a remake or a remaster of Final Fantasy VII. And again, this was before, this is like years before, like remakes and HD remasters and stuff were really a thing that were done. But I remember he said something along the lines of, you know, everybody wants Final Fantasy VII to be remade. And I don't know why. There's not a point to it. Uh, it's a good game. It's a big game. Sure. Uh, I'm not going to deny that. It's got a good story. But the thing is, do we really need to remake Final Fantasy VII? Do, do you, we really need to replay it? Because it's a long game. The story is good, but the story doesn't change. And look, when you play through Final Fantasy VII one time, that's it. You don't really go back to it. So... I don't think there's a need to re-release Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> and just with with going back in and delving into all the Final Fantasy VII stuff and kind of seeing the games that came out and the side things and the movie and all this other stuff and just all the hype around it, it made me remember this guy. And I don't even remember his name. I remember the store it was at. I remember the location. I kind of roughly remember the timeline. But I guess I'm just wondering if this guy, one, even remembers this conversation, but two, uh, what his thoughts are now that we've had, you know, uh, two spinoff games, countless re-releases, a movie, and uh, we're going to, it seems like, have three games in the remake series of Final Fantasy VII. Uh, because I'll tell you this, from what I know, Rebirth is, is not the end of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. No, uh, from what I know, there's going to be a third one, and the third one is going to be the last one. Um, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> so, yeah, that's... Sometimes, you know, you'll just have those stories where you, like, think back to a stranger or someone's like, I wonder how that person's doing or what they're thinking, and I think that was my Final Fantasy VII version of it. Now, what games am I currently playing? Now, you all, you know, picked up a little bit on this, I'm sure, from the last topic, uh, but... Like I said, uh, I've been playing, you know, I last uh, last month I ended up finishing uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, uh, well, Remake, excuse me, mix them up here. I finished Rebirth, uh, finished the Intermission DLC, uh, started playing a little bit of Crisis Core, wasn't as crazy about that one, uh, then Rebirth ended up coming out, and uh, Rebirth has been, it's it's been interesting so far. Um, I'll say this, I absolutely loved Remake. Like, it was just, I was going crazy over this game. I absolutely loved it. And when Rebirth ended up coming out, it started off incredibly strong. Uh, there's going to be some spoilers here, but take it for what it is, I will say. Um, some of it's going to be new stuff. Other stuff, it's like, well, this is, I mean, the game's been out for so long. You know, the story is still there. The story doesn't really change all too much. So I will say it, it had an incredibly great start where it just drops you right into the um, the background, like when uh, you're Cloud and Sephiroth visiting uh, Nibelheim. Uh, and, you know, they're telling the story about this in Calm. So the dynamic of the characters, I absolutely love. It's still great. Absolutely missed that. Um, I didn't realize how much I missed it until I finished uh, Intermission and you end up seeing the gang walking away from Midgar and, um, you know, them interacting and everything. So it is worth playing through Intermission if you have not already. Just do it. It's only two chapters. It's quick. It's good. Um, that's where he plays Yuffie on there. 
However, going through this here, uh, going through Rebirth uh, right at the beginning, you know, they just like drop you right into the action there. Uh, I was getting a little bit emotional as well, too, because just Final Fantasy VII is one of those very emotional experiences and games for me. So it was just so exciting being able to play this. Uh, and I will say that first night, uh, we started very late. It was like 10, 11 at night. That's when we started playing it. However, I said, I want to get to this particular part. And <laughs> if you all can believe me, I mean, honest to God, this is, this is how it was. Um, it was only a slight exaggeration. But I'm also kind of glad that we, I kind of wish we recorded this, but I'm also kind of happy we didn't because I feel like if we recorded it, everybody would have just looked at it and said, this is fake. Um, however, my girlfriend's on the couch with me. We're playing through this. We're watching it. And it was, you know, going through the whole background of how Sephiroth got to how he was, how he was the number one soldier and everything. And then he ends up realizing, uh, you know, who Genova is and what he has been born from, what he's been made out of. And I think they executed that beautifully. I think it hit much harder in Rebirth, where they were able where they were able to be much more granular and much more cinematic about it because you really do end up seeing like I mean it does spell it out for you but it's also like okay Sephiroth was also like originally he was a really morally good and honest character and then he ended up having his Joker moment and that's when he destroyed the village of Nibelheim so when all that was going on there's the infamous scene of course which this was like the the, the coolest thing back in the day it was where he destroys the village and then you have the fmv sequence of him just like sephiroth just like kind of smiling and slowly looking up and then turning away and his back is to the camera and there's all the flames there and you see that giant sword i i can just i can just describe it and people who haven't even played final Fantasy, if you haven't played final fantasy 7 but you've been on the internet long enough you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about with that image with that gif with that video that that particular scene right there and I was just like, you know, just the first night, I need to get to this. I I need to see, I need to see, like, debatably the most famous scene in Final Fantasy VII. I would say if we have to tie, like, a super famous scene, it's probably between that and Sephiroth killing Aerith. Those are, like, the two most iconic scenes in Final Fantasy VII. However, I was waiting for that, and then I was just getting really excited, really excited for it to come up. And when it did, when we saw it remade and rebirth. <laughs> i'm just laughing because we just we just started screaming that was it like i'm just freaking out about it my girlfriend she's on the side she's freaking out about it and at first i thought she was kind of trying to like play off of me and like kind of hype me up or something and then afterwards when it was over she was just like no that's the scene that's the famous scene i'm like yeah i told you she's like no but i've seen that before i've seen it like I remember, like, being on, like, blogs and stuff back in the day, and, like, I've seen that before. Oh, my God. Like, it's so cool they remade that. It looked so good. So it was cool. Like, even though she had never played the game, it was really cool from her own dynamic that she had her own memories of it. She was able to see it updated for 2024. Uh, so that was one of my favorite moments just because of that right there. Um, but, again, the uh, when it comes to it, I guess... I was going to talk about the gameplay and you know, I'll say there's, I, I feel like there's too much stuff in the game and some people might be thinking that, okay, it's a big open world action RPG. There's too much stuff. Just don't do this stuff. That's not really an option. No. What I mean by it is there's so many mini games in the game. There's so many side missions. There's so many other things that you can do. There's a lot of exploration, which can, which can be good to people. I'm not a 100% completionist type person, so that doesn't really attract me. And there's a lot of functionality in the game too. And to the point where it's like even kind of going through the map, there's different maps on there, but even kind of like controlling it, going through different places, it can feel a little bit overwhelming at times. However, when I say there's too much, I, I really mean there's too many mini games um, to a point where it's a little bit of a turnoff. And what I don't like is, you know, again, some people might say, well, don't do the mini games. You can't really not do them because in Remake, there was a few mini games that you could do. But in this one, there's a lot more mini games, but they force you to do many of them. I will say this when I play these games, uh, I don't play them to do a card game. I know some people like those card game components, kind of like um, I think 
Fable 2 had like the the pub games. Uh, I Witcher 3 had Gwent, and uh, this here has Queen's Blood. Uh, there's one part where you are forced into a Queen's Blood tournament. And I hated that. I hated that so much. I remember I went to sleep a little bit annoyed that night because I sat down, I went to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and I was just I, I was just floundering at Queen's Blood the whole time. And then I found out there's pretty much ways you can skip it where it's like you have to kind of like fail out the tournament, but it doesn't make it as obvious because it's really pushing you to play. There's going to be other times as well too where you are doing all these mini games that are just integrated in and you have to do them. Uh, so it is a necessary part of the story in order to do several of these remakes. And there might be people where it's like, you know, if you don't like dancing mini games, if you don't like, um, if you don't have like the best hand-eye coordination, it's going to be a frustrating experience. So I really wish there was a way to skip out on those. Um, that's my thing. If you want to have the mini games in there, cool, but don't force them so often to the player in order to make them progress in the game. That's just my opinion on there. Uh, at one point, you know, I, I actually put the down, the, the, the game down for a bit, um, because of the ridiculousness of it at times. I'll put it like this. I, I never had on my bingo card uh, Final F like uh, Cloud Strife on a Segway. I never thought that it would turn into a Cloud Strife Mall Cop. I I didn't think that was ever going to happen. But when you're in Costa del Sol, there are several... Uh, they don't call them Segways, but there's Segways in there that you can get on. And there's a mission that revol revolves around them. And it's a side mission, mind you, right? Um, but there's this you can do. And... It's funny because, like, I'm playing through the game, and a lot of the game just feels... It's kind of like, what if we made Final Fantasy VII XD so random, XD, XD, XD? And that's kind of how it feels at times, to the point where it's a little bit obnoxious. And that's not what I'm too crazy about. Um, when I was doing the Segway thing, I end up kind of losing my focus on there. So I actually end up probably parking the game for about a week... And there was one night where even my girlfriend's like, hey, do you want to play some Final Fantasy? I said, yeah, sure. So I picked up the controller, fired it up, loaded up my save. I forgot where I was before. As soon as the save loads up, I see Cloud on the Segway. And I moved around for about 20 seconds, and I just said, nope, I, I am too tired to deal with this right now. <laughs> like, I am... You know, the Segway's kind of killing me. <laughs> so it is... It's one of the oddest experiences I've had, and I'm I'm still one. It's definitely not a write off for me. Um, it's definitely something I'm going to be playing to the end, and I do want to finish the game. Uh, but there were so many additions to it that it was kind of drawing me away and kind of making me like check out from the game itself, which is unfortunate because I do love Final Fantasy. I do love Final Fantasy VII specifically, um, but I think that's been my thing, and I talked to a few other friends about it, and they kind of had the same opinions on it too, where they said like, yeah, it's a, it's a big game, it's an RPG, it's good to have content, but it almost feels like there's too much, and it's to the point where it's like, it feels like they packed in so much just for the sake of packing in that amount. Um, I haven't even talked about, you know, like how the game looks and all that. Like it, it's looking fine enough, but it doesn't look as good. It definitely took a visual downgrade compared to the first one. Um, I played Final Fantasy VII Remake on PS4 Pro and then on PS5. I was playing it in performance mode uh, each time. And this time around, I'm playing this one in performance mode. Uh, and meanwhile, you know, when you're in performance mode, graphics will take a hit. But Final Fantasy VII Remake looked beautiful. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth looks good um you can definitely say like it's not like it looks bad but it did take a noticeable downgrade which was definitely shocking especially because i was thinking okay you know this they've had several more years to work on the system to fine tune it to really you know squeeze as much as they can out of it so i understand that i'm going to get a graphical downgrade when i choose performance mode but i'm surprised that it's a bigger step down than the previous iteration you know, um, even though I didn't play the new Zelda a ton, I played it just enough where I could see, OK, uh, you know, the original one, um, the, the and it's escaping me right now. But uh, Breath of the Wild, that's it. I was able to see, you know, Breath of the Wild looked good on the switch. And then I end up playing Tears of the Kingdom 
and Tears of the Kingdom. You know, people have talked about the performance on there, sure, uh, but the game looks better on there. So you, it's surprising when you see that step back. Um, all in all, I guess I will lie if I, I, I would lie if I'm saying I'm not disappointed. I am a little bit disappointed in Rebirth so far, um, but I'm going to, you know, keep sticking to it. I do want to finish it out. I do want to see what happens, uh, and it's been an enjoyable game so far, uh, but I just don't have the same feelings of like, this is a masterpiece. I absolutely love this that I had with Remake on there, where that was an incredible game to me, while as this one, it just feels like they were trying too hard on it. So I'm a little apprehensive to see what will happen in the third one. I'm also curious to see how long it's going to take to get to that third one. But I guess we'll kind of just uh, get to that uh, when we get to it. So we have a, a little bit. So we have a little bit more time here at the end of this episode. And uh, since it's a solo one, I'm going to share a game store story. Now, for anybody who does not know, the background here is that I used to work at a local mom and pop video game shop. Um, it's been defunct for several years now, but we had two different locations. Uh, one of them was, you know, the bigger one, the more mainstay one, and the other one was the smaller original location. Uh, now, I mostly end up working at the bigger one, and um, it was it was a job that I enjoyed. Um, I enjoyed the job itself. I enjoyed the money, of course, that was coming in. I enjoyed my coworkers. Uh, but funny enough, I actually got burned out with video games when I was working there. And at the end of the day, it's still a retail job, even if it's something that you love. So, um, you know, take of that what you will. However, I did work this job uh, when I was in high school for about two and a half years before I ended up going off to college. And it was during, it was like in the midst of the seventh generation. So we're talking the, uh, the DS uh, the, would the PSP of, yeah, the DS, the PSP, I guess you can say was, well, it was, you know, a little long in the tooth at that point. Uh, however, you're also having the, uh, the Wii, the 360, the PS3. So that's when that generation was going on. I was kind of really in the thick of it right there. However, there's one story I've had on this list for a bit. And since I have a little more time, I think I'm going to tell it here. Uh, it is about a guy with an incredibly awful attitude, so it might upset some of you all uh, when you're listening, but just a unreasonably awful attitude, and one of those people who I think, I don't know what's going on, I only saw him this one time, but I think he was just one of those people who was just upset at the world and wanted to take it out on people all around him, I guess. Uh, so there was one night, as uh, we were, you know, getting close to close, uh, he ends up, uh, this, this man, he's an older man. He ends up coming in with his wife and his wife, the whole time, you know, she was, a, she was next to him. She wasn't saying anything. She didn't say a word the entire time, but she seemed lovely enough. So I never even had anyone who respond like this to a greeting before or after. Um, I said, you know, Hey, welcome to game shop. How are you doing today? And he just says, eh, not great. You know, I, I, there was another store I wanted to go to and they didn't really have what I had. And like, the, then there was another store and they were closed. So I guess I just wanted to see it was over here. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear about that. Um, I mean, hopefully we have what you're looking for. He's like, eh, y'all probably won't, but, uh, you know, I, I'll just go ahead and look around. So I, right off the bat, I'm like, okay, this is, this is a little odd. All right. So he is going around, he's shopping. And I believe he was buying um, a Wii game and maybe one or two DVDs. And he brings them up and I asked, all right, is this all for you? And he just looks at me. He says, no, I went around the store. I picked up these items and I brought them over to you just so you could ask me that question. And again, I'm like, what is this? In my head, I'm like, what is this dude's problem? Like, what is going on? So I end up finding a couple of the discs. And um, I think there was, I think there was one, I end up, no, no, there was, there was a couple. There was two of them I end up finding. And then I think uh, the third one was a Wii game. And so I'm looking for it. And occasionally this would happen because we had our cases on the floor and we had the discs in the back. So I start looking. It's not in the Wii section. I start looking elsewhere. I start looking around. So I'm going through the DVDs. I'm going through the PS2, the PS3, the Xbox, the Xbox 360. I'm going around looking for this disc. And this guy is there. And if you can all believe it, he's just saying, you're not going to find it. 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 
Like he he's just doing that. And I, you know, I have I, I'll say this. This happened so many years ago. This happened maybe, I mean, maybe let's say 16 years ago, something like that, 15, 16 years ago. So I have more life experience now. And I'm just like, with all the life experience now I have, I, I, I still can't fathom what would cause someone to act like this to a service worker. So he's just saying it. And I'm just trying to ignore him while also being professional. And so I'm looking all around and I can't find it. Right. So I can't find this disc. By the time I get to the last one, I said, I'm sorry, sir. I can't find this disc. And he said, I knew you weren't going to be able to find it. I knew it. I knew you weren't going to be able to find it. You, you weren't, you weren't going to be able to find it. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I just won't be able to sell this to you because, um, unfortunately we don't have the disc. He's like, well, I'm wanting that game. And I said, well, I'm sorry. I can't sell it to you because we don't have the disc for it. And, you know, I looked, I cannot find it. And he's like, okay, well, never mind. I don't want this. So I think this is what happened, right? So he had a DVD, he had a Wii game. Now I'm remembering a little more. I have to kind of dust off the mental cobwebs. So he couldn't get the Wii game. So I put it to the side. So he looks around for another minute or two. He comes back and he uh, he has um, he has another DVD, I believe. And he says, well, since you were able to find that other DVD, um, I guess I'll, I'll let you try to find this one here. But here's the deal. You have to find this disc for me. And if you don't find it for me, I'm going to leave. And I'm going to blackball your store's name throughout the entire state. And I didn't take his threat seriously. I'm just like, okay, okay, sure. I'll look for it. So I start looking. Within 30 seconds, I'm able to find it. He's like, oh, you were able to find it. I said, yes, I was. Is there anything else I can get for you tonight? He said, well, I want this. And he points to the Wii game. I said, well... I'm sorry, man. We, we don't have the disc for that. He said, well, that's what I want. I want that. I, I want that. I said, well, I'm sorry. We don't have it. He's like, well, why, why don't you have it? Why, why can't you find it? I said, well, I looked for the disc. Um, it's, it's not here. And at, at this point I was just, I was being, I don't know if I was really being a smart ass, but I just, I had less tolerance for it. So, uh, he was like, well, why couldn't you find it? And I said, well, you know, sometimes the discs go missing. Well, why do they go missing? I said, well, sometimes there's some coworkers here that don't know their ABCs. So, um, you know, if they don't know their ABCs, then it affects all of us here. He's like, well, that's a problem. I said, oh, I agree with you. Yeah, that's that's a problem because then I'm not able to find discs like this. He's like, well, I, I want my game. I want my uh, World War II. It was like some World War II flying game on the Wii. He's like, well, I want that game. I, I want that there. I was like, I'm sorry. I can't sell it to you, man. Um, until we Until we learn our ABCs a little better, I won't be able to sell that game to you. <laughs> So I end up, you know, I ring up the, uh, I think both the DVDs, uh, end up giving him the money and he can even be nice about this. He ends up paying in uh, cash and he like puts down some cash. He's like, wait, you know what? No, I, I want some change. So here's some extra stuff. So he gives me like some extra bills and coins like, wait, no, no, no. G give me this one here. What are you doing? I'll take this. I'm going to give you this. Um, no, no doubt trying to screw me up a little bit, but every time he changed around, I just, you know, I put in the exact amount in the computer. I wasn't doing the math. I just put in the exact amount of cash he gave me and it told me the exact amount to spit out to him. And that's what I was doing. Um, I don't remember how he left, but uh, he wasn't too pleasant about how he left either. He was kind of just, I think he just kind of gave a yeah, whatever type of look. And I remember, I just remember there were a couple things. Uh, there was one of my coworkers, I was kind of looking to him for help, quite literally looking to him and he couldn't really do anything. Um, there was his wife as well too, this gentleman's wife. I remember just looking at her a few times, kind of with kind of trying to like telepathically talk to her. Like, are you okay with him talking to people like this? Like you, you seem pleasant. Like you're polite, you're quiet. Like, are you okay with your husband just talking to people like this? Just talking down, just like insulting them and like just pushing his bad day off onto everyone for no reason. Um, and then I remember I ended up uh, writing a scathing note on that disc, uh, well, on the case, uh, because essentially in the back, we had a stack of cases which we had mismatching discs of. So the idea would be if we were ever able to find a disc for it, uh, then we could match that case, we could put it back out on the floor. Or if we end up getting a disc only version of a game that we had a case for in the back, we could just match it up to that and sell it for a little more. However, I ended up 
writing some note on there that just said something like, you know, a special thank you goes out to whoever ended up losing this disc because I had to search for it in all the cabinets and I couldn't find it. And I had to deal with a person with a horrible attitude who was just, you know, being unpleasant and just really rude and awful the entire time. I was not happy that night after dealing with that. <laughs> But uh, that's that's my story there about um, I had it noted down in my notes as a awful attitude guy upset over his game being taken. And that's exactly who we talked about. So in some ways, he is uh, still living in infamy a little bit there. Uh, but I don't remember his name. Uh, I barely remember his face, but his attitude, you cannot forget that. And I'm so happy uh, that was the first and last time I ever saw him come into that shop. So just be nice to workers, all right, to employees, to others, okay? It's not that hard. It really isn't. Just be nice. Just be pleasant to them, okay? Can we just do that, please? Can we just do that? Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, that is about it for this episode of Mario's Minute. We're going to be wrapping it up a little bit early here, uh, but I did want to give a uh, keyword or a key phrase. And if you use this keyword or key phrase in a comment on the video upload, I'll know that you've made it to the end of this episode. Uh, so, you know, how about this? How about marker? Typically, I just kind of pick something that I see on my desk. But uh, what is your favorite brand of marker? Do you like dry erase markers? Do you like Sharpie markers? Do you dislike or do you like bootleg Sharpies? For me, Sharpies have been the best ones. Have you, have you ever written on a dry erase board with a Sharpie? Because I'll tell you this, uh, apparently if you ever do that, there's two ways of cleaning it up. Either one, uh, you can use like isopropyl alcohol and wipe it down, it comes right off. Or number two, which this blew my mind, if you ever write on a dry erase board with Sharpie, just go over your Sharpie markings with a dry erase marker and then erase it. And apparently that cleans it right off. Blew my mind. <laughs> Anyways, if you use the word marker in your comment on the video upload, I'll know that you've made it to the end of this episode of Mario's Minute. As I always say, though, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for listening and watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this episode, a like would absolutely be appreciated, and if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well, too. But again, as I always say, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for listening and watching, and until next month.